The San Francisco Bay Area's rapid transit system is BART. It's the subway that carries two-thirds of all commuters across the bay, under the congested Bay Bridge. It was planned in the 50s as a way to solve traffic forever, but only a fraction of the system has actually been built. Why? The idea for BART came soon after World War II, as soldiers were turned home to buy a car and start a family in the suburbs. America had won the war with such overwhelming technology that there was really no reason to worry about foreign affairs. Instead, they worried about congestion. The suburbs had grown so fast, a new home might be more than 20 miles away from the city center. Not only did the roads need to be longer, they also needed to go through the other suburbs, who might complain. The Bay Area Rapid Transit District suggested building mass transit instead. By carrying more people in less space, trains could handle demand for 50 years or more. But trains were considered old-fashioned, and in 1957 the Soviet Union launched the world's first satellite, directly over the mainland United States. They beat us to the space age. We choose to go to the moon in this decade. America may have overreacted. So Bart imagined a completely new form of transportation based on space age principles. Only the latest advancements in electric propulsion, aluminum alloys, and even computerization would be used for this system of the future. There's no point in imitating standard rail design when you have a free hand to design something better. Bart worked with real aerospace companies to develop technical reports, engineering studies, and financial forecasts. But complex diagrams were printed in color, and concept art was overlaid on real images. So it read like a sci-fi novel, which is what it was. Bart had no power to raise taxes, and only three county governments allowed it as a bond measure. But their citizens agreed. Bart would take the bay into the space age. The system was so space age that Bart only hired a few engineers. Instead, Bart built a test track and invited the aerospace companies to demonstrate whatever they thought the system would need. President Lyndon B. Johnson broke ground to showcase all this American innovation. On the test track, four different companies demonstrated driverless train technology. Bart decided to use the Westinghouse design. The Transbay tube was the most important part of the project, since it would link the two sides of the bay. It would have to be the longest underwater subway in the world, and so lasers were used to accurately position the steel segments before being sunk and welded into place. Track construction was done by Parsons Brinkerhoff Tudor Vegetal, who introduced widespread use of tunnel boring machines prefabricated track segments, and of course, the most advanced earthquake resistance available. Today's BART extensions are built like three miles at a time, and they take decades. Not even Silicon Valley has had its diesel train replaced by BART yet. The suburbs have actually expanded so far that they're outside BART's original comprehensive plan. The American way now means driving four hours a day for these mega commuters. Something has to be done, and the Tri-Valley Regional Whatever Authority was formed in 2017 to do it. Bart technology would bring the most benefit to these far-flung communities, but it's so expensive it would take decades to reach them at all. That's why today, most American transit expansion focuses on either light rail or commuter rail. These cheaper options are worse because of grade crossings and overall slow speeds. But they're cheap, so you can build them in longer chunks per dollar. This way more people, and their politicians, get something sooner. The theory goes that over time these projects can be grade separated and electrified, so that they're almost as good as a real subway. That hasn't really happened, but compared with the problems today's mega projects face, it's probably not a bad strategy. Speaking of plans, Bart had won the public with their engineering reports, but they hadn't consulted any local communities about this, like at all. 
Some communities then spent years discussing various issues. The financial plan assumed construction would begin after just a year of design. Bart loudly complained that local politics was delaying the system of the future. The few part engineers overseeing the train control system were not as excited. Westinghouse had been making progress reports, but not providing documentation about how the system actually worked. They worried that the system would not be safe for operation once delivered. The engineers circulated a memo, which got leaked, and then they were fired. Bart was running only a few years late, but this all coincided with a wave of inflation, far beyond Bart's estimates. And so at the height of construction, Bart realized it would run out of money. Bart considered trimming the system length, or using standard trains instead of developing its expensive technology. But Bart's custom space-age track meant only Roar was capable of building the vehicles. And Bart had been counting on trains running every 90 seconds in order to be profitable. Humans couldn't do that. Bart doubled down instead, and begged the state for a sales tax to cover up the difference. The Transmate tube was still years away from completion, but to start making money, Bart figured they opened the easiest section first, Oakland to Fremont Station. Bart opened to the public in September 1972. On week one, more than 100,000 people rode the new train, just to experience the future. High-speed trains accelerated smoothly under automatic control, with air conditioning, carpeted floors, and all the amenities a 21st century traveler would expect. On week two, President Nixon took a trip, closing Johnson's opening a decade earlier. Nixon didn't pay his fare. Well, I'm not a crook. On week three, a Fremont-bound train accelerated through Fremont Station, off the embankment on the other side. The modern equivalent to BART is California High-Speed Rail, another expensive, comprehensive stab at California traffic. Meanwhile, BART's space-age technology has gotten pretty dated, but it just doesn't seem to matter to the 400,000 daily riders who depend upon it. Even Caltrain serves 60,000 riders a day, using the same slow diesel locomotives they've always had. Other systems have popped up too, all running on cheap but standard technology. With no money to develop new technology, California High-Speed Rail and Caltrain have agreed to run a blended system in the bay. What that means is High-Speed Rail will slow down to run on the same track as Caltrain, but Caltrain will speed up to match with a new set of electrified trains. Poles for electric wires are already going up, with High-Speed Rail paying a third of the cost. That means the comprehensive Bay Area Rapid Transit system is under construction. Without BART, 